Joel looking for is with the Livestock Farm Business Branch. Since graduating from Grant McEwen University, Joel has worked directly with primary producers in a number of roles with Alberta Agriculture and the Rural Development, recently focusing on investment, tax business structure, and financial strategies. Joel also serves as Alberta's representative to Farm Management Canada and is currently in the middle of his own succession plan with his family farm in St. Albert, Alberta. It's a real treat to have Joel here because he is part of our succession plan and we're very proud to have him and people like Abby and him as being part of our group. But really what we're, I guess, going to kind of cover as we go through today, uh, really how critical it is, as, as Ann kind of gave us the, the high level, the overview of the industry and what that looks like, how key it is to knowing our business on, on the cost side uh, so we can make informed market decisions, so we can respond to some of the changes that... Uh, that that may be there from her from her forecasts and really to do this we have some uh, some great tools with the department that uh, we'll kind of go through today that can help in the operation and and this is a kind of a quick speech I only have about half an hour here with you but uh, we'll cover them and, and hopefully pique some interest and then the best part is going away with it after and sort of sort of playing around with it for your own operation and then we'll just highlight again as, as it's key to kind of tie things together uh, Rick talked this morning about uh, how you access capital but We'll talk about what our operations look like as we, as we sort of respond to market changes. Uh, and the more highly levered we are, how careful we, I guess we have to be in making sure we're doing proper diligence in managing our operations. So we'll start a bit of, uh, just a bit of theory just to kind of get everybody on the same page. And I'll, I'll go a bit quick here so we can mostly focus on the tool. But uh, as we talk about risk and risk management strategies, we always focus, uh, and I'm as guilty of it as anyone on the negative side of risk, but the real definition is an uncertain event that has both a positive or negative impact on our, on our business. Uh, so really ensuring that we understand, I guess, in a risk cycle there's positives and negatives and ensuring we know how our business is performing helps us take advantage of those uh, positive and negative consequences. Just pull this out here. But uh, so I guess basically just an introduction to the basic uh, uh, risk management process as well before we really get into the tool uh, and how to use it. So we start uh, basic process, we start by identifying the sources of risk, so what's out there, what's in the news, what's going to impact our business as we move forward through things uh, uh, in our operations. And then really taking a good big picture at assessing the risk, so what's out there, how big is that risk, uh, is it an opportunity, is it a threat, uh, and does it really matter to my operation. Uh, so again, we really need to understand all aspects of our business to really make informed decisions and informed calls uh, as we assess things. And then we get to the point where we start to look at the strategy. So how do we deal with this? How do we apply the strategy? Uh, is there opportunity uh, that we can exploit? Uh, or is there something we need to put in to try to minimize any kind of threat? Uh, and Brenda's going to follow up a bit with a, with a few more uh, definitions and of course the key tool for the, for the cattle industry after this. And then again, just like the shampoo bottle when you get out of the shower, something we need to do is repeat. So review and repeat this process. Uh, we're fed new information again as we sort of follow things along with Ann and our, our market outlooks. Things change week to week, day to day, uh, making sure we're incorporating that new uh, information into our business uh, so we can make better and better decisions as we go forward. And then as we talk about risk, I think it's important we're going to focus primarily on financial risk here today. but. Uh, Obviously a big, big factor is our strategic risk. We heard about succession planning this morning. Uh, when do you expand the herd? When do you contract? When do you sell? Uh, so a big, big strategic risk is sort of out there. And for this presentation, we're going to assume, as I'm sure everybody in the room is, everything's been done 100% from a strategy standpoint. And then really what we're going to look at uh, today is our operational risk. So how we split that out, there's our business risk, so our risk that comes from uh, any of the, the variability that our firm or our business may have uh, in our production and marketing. So obviously, uh, you guys know as well as anybody that things fluctuate on both the production side and both the, uh, the marketing side as well. So what can we put in place to help us sort of balance that risk? Uh, and then really at the end of this, there's the financial risk as well. So we're trying to grow a business, we're using capital. Um, the more highly levered we are, the more important it becomes uh, to take a good look at the tools and strategies out there to protect ourselves on that financial risk side of things. 
Uh, and then again, uh, just to sort of just to sort of reemphasize things, as you as you move through on your farm, you know you're here today. You have some plan to get to this point in the future. Maybe it's taking the private jet down to your private island, whatever it is, and then you have your, your plan how you're going to get there. But really, we all know that things are going to fluctuate along that. Uh, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. Over some set period uh, is just a given with how volatile things are. But ensuring we're doing our, our proper diligence, uh, looking at the opportunities there, how we can exploit them, how we can enhance them to add value to ourselves, uh, or if it's maybe something we don't agree with, uh, what's the proper strategy? How do we decide when to ignore that risk? And the other component to this is the threat side as well. So we know things are going to go down. There's going to be outside forces that impact our business as well. What can we put in place to avoid that risk, to transfer that risk, um, reduce it if we need to, or is it something that we can't, can't control or can't change and we just need to learn how to accept that risk? So one of, the, one of the key programs, and it's been mentioned today uh, again, uh, our senior economist uh, on the cattle side with ARD runs this program, AgriProfits. Uh, so um, we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about cow bites, and then really we'll spend the bulk of this presentation uh, on a new, new tool Bruce has just developed here, uh, Rancher's Risk and Return. So AgriProfits, maybe just by a show of hands, how many of us have heard of the program in the room? It's a pretty good number, and certainly uh, uh, Dale, Dale Cleal, again, we have, uh, it sort of runs this program. Uh, we have information on the side, and, and Abby's certainly willing to give a bit more information, but I wanted to just quickly highlight it for those that don't know. Um, what it does is it essentially gives you the ability to work with a, a consultant, an economist, uh, help you define and identify your own numbers in the business, uh, and really get it, ensure we're doing the costing side of things properly, uh, so we can use the cost to start to make uh, bigger and better decisions as we start to go forward. And it really is the first step when we look at starting to do some critical analysis in our business. Best of all, it's free. Free to use, uh, free to abuse, I guess. Uh, Dale's got lots of time. Just kidding, I'm waiting for him to see that on the video later. But uh, what you really get out of this is the benefit is on the margin side. Um, uh, not only do you get your own numbers and, and help in understanding the margins uh, in your business, but you get the benchmarks as well. So you can compare yourself to the average industry numbers uh, and see how you're performing. Uh, really gives you that critical step to analyze and compare numbers back and forth. Uh, and as you can see, we're in obviously in a very, very volatile industry. Uh, things go up, things go down, and we know that's going to continue going forward. The other part is it really gives us that uh, that opportunity to see our costing side in the picture. So uh, this is one, uh, one where we really start to see some benefit. You can see from the, the long-term run, so from this he has from 95 to 2010, you can see the difference in the average low-cost producer versus the average high-cost producer. There's almost a 50 cents uh, uh, per pound uh, gain on the, on the low-cost side here. And really, as things have been volatile, uh, the low-cost guys here in green, or in the lighter green, uh, have significantly outperformed the guys that are high cost, which obviously is pretty straightforward, but these guys are making a conscious effort to control and manage their costs. So the best part is, when you go through this program, you get the, uh, the opportunity to do your own numbers and then compare to the industry averages. Uh, the other one we wanted to point out quickly, and, and these are just kind of quick infomercials here, but uh, is our Cow Bites program. So the program was just, uh, or just updated this year, and. Uh, uh, Pat Ramsey's in the room as well, and Barry Remcio have sort of worked to develop this, uh, uh, this cow bites. And so the new version is out. It's eligible now for, uh, uh, or updated for Windows 7, uh, and is uh, considerably more user friendly. Uh, but it amazes me that it's basically, uh, for those that don't know, is uh, easy to use beef rationing software. Uh, and it amazes me, I've used it, uh, used the older, older versions, and uh, I've done some work with Bruce on the new version. It amazes me how bang on this program is. It, uh, never seems to be, it's barely, uh, or sort of very, very minimal off uh, from the actuals, and it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's a proven and trusted tool, and, and something that's a bit of a Cadillac program, I think, in Canada here. The best part, uh, again, very minimal cost on that as well for 50 bucks, just, uh, just to kind of help with some maintenance on that. So really, I guess the bulk of the presentation that we'll spend here is really just sort of looking at this rancher's risk and return tool. Um, we heard, we heard all the updates this morning from Ann about what the industry is doing and uh, really making sure we're taking a good look at our business and, and how we adapt, uh, adapt and what we put in place, I guess, to manage that risk as we go forward is pretty key. And this, uh, this is a great tool that will help us do that. So 
It's an easy to use downloadable Excel spreadsheet. Um, again, most people are fairly comfortable with Excel, so it is, it is fairly easy to use. Uh, gives you better understanding of your production costs, uh, your break even, and your selling prices. Uh, and the best part, uh, how it's built, it'll really help you uh, and give you the starting point to analyze whether you want to take cattle price insurance uh, uh, or where you use options going forward in the future as well. So how it works, uh, just in, in, in kind of a high level picture, uh, we get the input side of things. So we have our, our variable and our fixed cost as part of this. Uh, we have our production information that we plug into the program as well. And then the best part, uh, you, you choose, you've, you've heard, uh, I guess, the, uh, the forecasts and, and you sort of look at uh, the industry this morning or the industry going forward and you put in your own expected prices. Uh, we'll go into a bit more detail in a sec here, but you put in your expected prices that you'll see going forward. Uh, and it's going to help you sort of analyze on a year-to-year -year basis your profitability on the enterprise. Uh, so it's not a full accounting program, but it's going to help you year-to-year -to, -year to make decisions. Uh, it'll work through. It'll help you calculate your break-even selling points. Uh, and then it'll give us uh, some graphs and, uh, uh, and sort of the decision tools on our return to equity, our return on equity, and our return on investment. And then really the starting point where we can start to evaluate our risk management and what we need to do going forward. So the program is set up, uh, again, for two enterprises. It's on, a, on an enterprise basis. So we have our, our cow-calf side of the spreadsheet. Uh, traditional, traditional tool for cost of production, break even, and then profit and risk uh, uh, evaluation strategy. So we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, it is, uh, again, and, and you can see here, these numbers are blue. And the numbers, as we go through this, the blue numbers are what you put in from your own operation, and the program does the rest of the work. But it also, if we're on that side of the business as well, it, it gives us a feeding projection as well uh, for whether we're, if we're in the feeding industry. So it can do cost of production there, break even, and then financial returns. And then we can look at uh, uh, the livestock price insurance program as well. So this is what it looks like. And I know it's a little scary at first when you kind of, you put it up, but this is one page on an Excel spreadsheet that we're trying to fit into one slide here. As you start to go through it, the numbers in blue here are what we're playing around with. And it's going to calculate this uh, through you, and we'll talk about uh, some of the specifics here quickly. Uh, we'll have the chart uh, at the bottom where you can start to use and analyze whether you want to take cattle price insurance or not. So for the example, as we went through this, uh, 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 Bruce uh, has used the AgriProfits data, so we have actual numbers in this. At, uh, for sort of a half an hour presentation, it's a little difficult to go through the numbers specifically, but uh, uh, we are working with real numbers out of this program. Um, so we'll kind of show you quickly and give you a bit of an overview of how this works. So you start with your commodity prices uh, and you build rations uh, for each month. Uh, and you're going to see the, the feeding costs, I guess, on the side there start to total up immediately here. So it is in dollars per ton. Uh, if, you're, if you've got it in, in bushels, you'll have to convert it to dollars per ton. But you can add in whatever you're feeding here as the title uh, and work it through on dollars per ton. Uh, at the top, you'll have your feeding days uh, and how many days on feed for the for the cat or for the uh, for the operation. And you can use uh, uh, the cow bites program as well to help you with the rationing forecasts. Again, then we look at the costing side of our operation. So we add in the variable and fixed costs in this operation: our bedding, our our veterinary costs. Uh, you start with, or the program itself is going to start with the agro benchmark numbers in there. Uh, so if you don't have all the numbers in detail, uh, you can use the, the, av or the area average numbers. Uh, but the best part, once you start playing around with this tool, is really to get to the point where you're using it with your own numbers uh, to start to make decisions. Um, and you really do start to see how the program works with the sample numbers in there. Uh, but you can estimate your own, but uh, they're a little difficult to sometimes pull right out of the accounting information. Uh, but try to get as close as you can, and it's going to generate some quick, useful results. So we can. Already with the costing side, start to see our cost per pound of wean calf and our total cost per calf uh, with the tool. You're going to allocate back uh, with it when you get ready to sort of analyze your costs. Uh, it's going to split costs out between steers and heifers. So you can start to make that decision on insurance in a little bit uh, uh, and really calculate your floor prices out of this. So you allocate your own calf cost to this. You calculate the CPIP floor prices out of the program. Uh, and then you start to enter in your own uh, information for planning prices. So you choose the forecast that uh, uh, where you think it's going to go. You're going to pick either your lowest. Uh, you're going to pick your lowest price that you expect out of the year. You're going to pick the actual price you expect to see, and you're going to pick a high price point. 
And the program's going to uh, work with all three to give you a forecast going forward. So you can get to a sensitivity analysis out of this is the real, is the real sort of gem. You can look at what happens if prices don't go the way we want, what happens if it works on sort of what I'm planning with, and what happens if, if I sort of hit the jackpot here. So again, at the top, uh, for the cattle industry, you can instantly read the results as soon as you put in your, you've got your costing done, so you can instantly start to see uh, with your steer prices and your heifer prices what you like. So you have the price you expect, the highest price, and the lowest price. And what it's going to give us is our gross margin here uh, with insurance. Um, basically, you can see the difference here uh, from our lowest price uh, to, our, to the price we expect to the highest price if we hit the jackpot here. You can kind of compare your operation uh, and benchmark between all three for sort of that what-if planning. We have our return to equity on the side of things without insurance and with insurance. So you can start to compare whether you want to take cattle price insurance on this and how much it's going to protect you uh, I guess if, if things do trend downwards, as we know, uh, everything's vol everything has volatility in it. Uh, but you can see the difference. If you'd taken it up from your return to equity with insurance uh, and you did wind up with that lowest price, uh, you would have still, been, uh, still retained some return on equity at 13000 versus uh, a negative return at 31000 So you can start to play around with this for your own operation. Uh, and it will show you, I guess, the benefit from insurance on the downside. Uh, and the best part, uh, again, uh, uh, with, uh, sort of gives us a traditional hockey stick uh, graph here, and we could talk about this all day if we wanted to, but uh, really gives you the, the starting point to start to analyze, I guess, uh, how you want to apply this for your own operation. Uh, basically, it's going to show you your uninsured equity, which is in the red here. Uh, as prices start to slide on the bottom, you see how quickly things drop off on your equity. Having uh, taken an insured return on this is going to limit your losses here. Uh, and only leave you with a marginal sort of a price discount on the premiums going forward. Uh, so the program's going to help you calculate that exact number out for yourself. Again, as I, as I sort of look at the clock here, we'll go a bit quicker through the feedlot projection, but uh, uh, again, on the, uh, the other tab of this sheet, you can use it for feedlot projections as well. So again, it's a very similar one-page one Excel spreadsheet. Uh, we have uh, an, an additional graph on this to show our investment returns as well on the feeder side. So you can start with uh, all your input data. You're going to estimate your feed costs uh, and estimate your other costs. Again, your yardage, your bedding, your veterinary costs. Uh, and basically, basically sort of look at, uh, again, it's, uh, it's in price per ton uh, for the feeding side. But it's going to give you some quick results out of this on your cost uh, per animal unit. And we're also going to get out of this uh, sort of uh, the CPIP forward or CPIP uh, coverage forecast. Uh, so we can look at uh, at this through the program. We put in our costing side, and we can look at our prices that we expect and calculate out the hedgeable, hedgeable profit per head price here. So out of this example with the AgriProf benchmarks, we've uh, put it to about thirty-five dollar hedgeable price. Whether we want to choose to take an option uh, on that instead of using CPIP. The downside with the option is that then we're exposed to the basis risk on the other side, which is quite considerable, uh, sort of at, uh, at eight cents that uh, we put in this forecast. Uh, then you can look at it and compare it, I guess, directly with the insurance cost on that on the other side. So you have your uh, uh, basic insurance coverage here at 124 and an insurance premium on top of that. Uh, you're going to get to put back in your most likely price, your best case, and your worst case price scenario on the feeding side. Uh, and really, you can see if you hit your worst case here is, is sort of, uh, again, there's positives and negatives and everything. But uh, if you hit the worst case scenario here uh, in the graph, there's a minus 71% loss on your return to equity had you not insured that. Versus with it insured, you're at a minus 5% lo uh, loss on that return of equity. So it gives you that price point to start making some decisions on, on whether I want to take it or not, and how, how big of an impact do I see the future uh, markets, uh, or how volatile are they going to be going forward. Uh, and again, it's going to give us a very similar uh, hockey stick, uh, hockey stick uh, uh, graph here that we can use to show the, uh, the insurance price point, but it's also going to put in our hedgeable price uh, line here as well. So again, we had that $35 uh, roughly $35 uh, uh, option we could have taken on this. And that would stop our losses here had we chosen to do that. But it exposes us to the basis risk on the other side. 
Again, there's a difference with, uh, with the insurance product. It's not going to allow us to lock in a profit. But uh, again, it is going to be, it is gonna be uh, or leave out some of that basis risk that we may have. Uh, and again, you can see the premium discount uh, from your uninsured return to equity. And then if we want to get even, even deeper into analysis, we have a return on investment. So what we've actually invested into this, hopefully we don't have to shut it off again. If, so if we want to do a bit more uh, uh, and get even deeper into some analysis uh, for a return on investment, you can see as we start to see uh, uh, prices, if, if uh, again, for the, or just for the, for the graph, if prices slid on the bottom, um, you can see about an, an 8% loss on your return to equity uh, if we sort of hit that worst case scenario, or an increase of up to eight, almost 8% if we sort of hit that jackpot price on the feeding side. With, uh, with the program, Again, we can limit our losses uh, at a slight premium, or we have the hedge option as well uh, for, the, uh, for, or for the option to sort of lock in uh, that almost 2% return on our investment. So I'm getting uh, close out of time here, so I'll, I'll go a bit quicker, but uh, the other part we wanted to highlight is how important this becomes as we start to get more and more leverage on our operation. Uh, so again, if we're, if we're starting out, uh, we typically have more debt on the operation. Uh, and if we're not careful in how we manage that, there can be significant uh, downfalls for, for the business. So if we take an example of farm one, farm two, farm three, and we have separate equity ranges in there, um, uh, and we look at uh, the drop in equity compared to the amount of debt they have on that business, uh, it can be quite substantial as we move through this. So if you have farm one, they have a, a equity of a, of a million dollars, they have no debt on the business, um, a drop of 100,000 in equity, is a, is a sort of a 10% loss there. If we have farm two, 500,000 equity, 500,000 debt, they're gonna have a 20% loss in equity on that same, uh, on that same loss uh, for their 500,000. And if we have farm three, and we have the same thing and they're highly, highly leveraged at 750 for their uh, 250,000 of equity, uh, we have a drop of three uh, in our leverage ratio, they're gonna be at about 40% loss to total equity to their money as well. So you can really start to see, I guess, if you break it out in chart format, uh, again, you have your return on equity uh, and your return on investment over time. Uh, if you're uninsured in this, in this example, you can see as price swings happen, the more debt you have on that, that business, the more, uh, uh, the more significant the loss of equity is, is going to be. Uh, so the other part we wanted to highlight, I guess, out of this is was with the planning tools of the option or the, or the cattle price insurance, you could put an option in uh, on that $35 hedge we worked out uh, to sort of limit any downfall loss uh, if we do see a price slide. Uh, there is some loss on the upside as well, some of the cost to carry that. Uh, but also with the insurance program that Brenda's is going to discuss in a little bit here, you can start to see we can lock in, uh, basically limit, st put a stop on the limit to losses on this uh, at, this, uh, at this price discount from our total return on equity. So in summary, I guess the tool is there. It's, uh, I know we, we kind of go through things pretty quickly today, but uh, uh, it's simple, it is easy to use once you get playing around with it. Uh, you can use this to kind of calculate your expected costs, your break-evens, uh, and then really look at the CPIP implications for your operations, and then make a better management decision for how you want to plan to go forward with, uh, with some sort of product uh, to help you if, you, if you choose you need it. Uh, the tool is found on www.agriculture.alberta.ca. Uh, again, it's downloadable in our decision-making tools, a uh, free tool that's there uh, along with, uh, with many others. Uh, this is uh, Bruce's contractor that helped him with the program, James. Uh, I think he probably did the bulk of the work, but he's trading options here today. Um, oh, and, I, and, and that's the end. I'll take questions. But I just wanted to, uh, Bruce had, had put this one together, and I thought it's uh, so critically important to look at. Uh, uh, you can kind of see as you go through here, had... Uh, had you had cattle price insurance, I guess, from, from 80 to 2005 here, um, really that red line is where we would see the stop to, stop to loss on with the program. Uh, really would have helped quite significantly with the industry. And um, uh, just something I want to highlight, I think it's a pretty, pretty interesting slide. Uh, so certainly I know probably a little over time here, but if there are questions, we'd be happy to take them.